Hi hello, welcome back. Welcome back to another Onkrad video. I am just a simple man and that comes with principles. One of those principles is I like playing zombie horde survival games like Vampire Survivors. Another principle is when my buddy Cool Kid or Stuff or however he calls himself these days advises me to play a game, I will do it. Soulstone Survivors. Similar mechanics to something like Vampire Survivors to something like Biters and Bullets we recently played and again it's also a demo so it's a free to play version of like the bare bones basic version of the game that everyone can play right now. Findable on Steam. Link will definitely be in the description. This is not sponsored or anything but I just wanted to check it out. A whole bunch of characters available already. There's six in this prologue version and then there's a bunch of people locked for the full release i guess we're starting off with the barbarian using two axes we can upgrade our axes at the blacksmith we have some runes which are some passive upgrades there, and we have the skill tree which is a skill tree looks like we have a bunch of different currencies to buy upgrades in the end to buy upgrades later on in the game but for now all we need to do is <coughs> fight we are going to the scorching valley and there's three maps available already the scorching valley for us though what's happening all right we are automatically shooting we are moving with the keyboard, not with the mouse. Interesting choice. Yellow orbs, experience. Blue orbs is money. Yeah, that's exactly right, I think. I already love the aesthetic. Like, it's really pleasing. It's appealing. Enjoyable. Seems like we're getting some nice critical hits in there now and again. And I love that we start off with this big AOE as well. Normally in these types of games, you always start off with just like a single projectile. But not here. Here it's just immediately into that AOE damage all around you action. Standard upgrade system. Have to choose from three upgrades. And immediately there's a rarity introduced as well. The uncommon power increases our movement speed by 20%. But for now, I would like the multicast modifier more. Because popping our ability twice on the robot will one-shot everything around us like right there. Thank you for explaining that or showing that game. Soundtrack is popping away in the background. We're in kind of a desert setting. One thing I already noticed is that the pickup range is a lot shorter than in other games like this. And here we go already. A new active skill, so a new weapon basically. Trust is hitting enemies in front of us. Subdue happens where we aim it and it deals more damage if the enemy is already bleeding. And then Shadow Spikes is another straight line but it's just one enemy. So I'm gonna go for Trust because I feel like that will make it so that I have even more AoE. You can see the cooldown of our skills very clearly displayed over there at the bottom. Uh, oh, alright, and I just noticed that there was a spacebar item there and we already have a dash ability as well. What's this? This seems to be kind of a chest thing. I don't know, we got two of the different kinds of rune stones or gems or whatever and I can see an elite enemy making his way to us. Behemoth gives us some extra health, magnetic is gonna... Oh, alright, so in this game they put the pickup range and the experience yield increase together in one upgrade that's interesting and that's cool and then also merciless which is the damage one it's uncommon it's damage in your first run of these kinds of games you're always just gonna try to go for the maximum amount of damage right maybe get a little bit of survivability in there but in general you just want to be a badass Try and get rid of this elite and he's probably gonna drop an insane power right an epic power area of effect of everything critical damage even more or move speed oh so i thought agile the move speed increase would be an uncommon power in general but no you have different levels to each and every single power so this could probably have also been just a common or an uncommon power with a smaller modifier we have to go for the epic power, right? We have a lot of area of effect things already, so increasing their effectivity is definitely something we like. Clear indicators on the ground of where we are not supposed to be to dodge all of the attacks that these enemies pop. A blizzard, a bomb, or a paladin strike holy type of damage. Let's go for the paladin strike, that sounds cool. I guess the elite did not really drop a specific upgrade, he just dropped a whole lot of XP. Which I mean, I'm not complaining about, of course, but... A cool little upgrade like the weapon crate and biters and bullets would have of course always been cool. 
There's another elite there already. They seem to be following up, us up in quick succession. And one thing I do notice as well is that the clock is not counting down in this game. Whereas in most other games, it's always counting down. In here, it's just counting up. And it's just telling us that we have been aligned for only... We have been alive for only 2 minutes and 40 seconds. Sure, let's just upgrade our whirlwind ability. The first ability we spawned with. For now, I'm just going with the very basic upgrades. I also see that there is an arrow on our map pointing towards this side. And this is already the edge of the map. So the playing field that we are operating in right here is a lot smaller than what we are used to from the previous games from this genre. And here we go. A nice little huge gemstone deposit, I guess. Or maybe there was something else in there. I have no idea. Or maybe that's something that heals us. Green is, of course, the color of healing in games. It's like the universal language for healing, green. The elites are sticking up. I should really focus this guy here. Because he has been throwing these fireballs in the air a lot. The distinction between dead and alive enemies is a lot clearer here than it was in Biters and Bullets. So I think that's the main cause for us not having taken any damage at all so far. Wow, I love that. 100% chance to critical strike an enemy with full health. Sure, sure, sure. I love that. So our first hit against every enemy is always going to be very strong. And for now, that means that we are one-shotting the basic zombies around us. And we have... Or zombies, well, I don't know. They look more like goblins, to be honest. We have spawned a lord, which is like an elite elite. And it's our objective to eliminate the lords. This guy has a massive health bar, which we are trying to decrease. Glacier summons, a gl summons an ice ball that stuns and slows. Might empowers us. And Thunderclap is hitting the ground with Thunder, making enemies stunned and disoriented. I feel like we might benefit from some crowd control skills like a stun, a slow, a disorient, something like that. But Ice is probably not going to be the best choice because I imagine this guy is going to be very much resistant to Ice damage. Therefore, Thunderclap it is. Just like I Thunderclapped your mom's cheeks last night. I love 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 how clear the indicators are of areas where you should not be standing remind me a lot of guild wars cost frequency even higher even larger area or move speed cost frequency seems nice all right we got hit for the first time right there we have two swing types so we could upgrade them but maybe magnetic is fine a bit of a larger collection area and also a bit of an increase in experience effects let's go we're not really going a minion build let's go for lightning damage trying to increase our crowd control even a bit more the effects are beautiful the effects in this game so far which i have spotted i love how busy the screen is everything is happening all at once but it doesn't feel cloggy it doesn't feel like it clocks up the screen you know i can still feel what i'm doing i can still see what's happening and i can still respond to my surroundings thunderclap and chain lightning sir we'll, sure we'll go kind of an electric build why not Okay, we got hit again. Let's see if we can find one more of those green things. And now larger enemies have spawned. Let's see if we can find another one of those green rocks. Because I want to test the theory whether that is healing or not. I don't necessarily see an arrow on my map yet. Maybe I shouldn't have destroyed all of them earlier. But it's the very first run we've ever done, you know. I'm still figuring things out. The goblins also got replaced by skeletons. And we should definitely remember to use our dash more. Maybe we can't get to a healing point because this guy is still alive. Because I do see an arrow pointing at him when he's off screen. For now, those things are all questions, but they will be answered soon enough. Let's go for the Chaos Bomb. Again, we are not going for a minion build. And I denied an ice ability earlier, so I'm going to do that again. Cast Frequency. We might have to start opting into some defensive options sooner or later. But for now, I still want to be Glass Cannon. A whole lot of experience over here. An epic power specific for our multicast ability. That's what we like to see. No electric abilities here. A shadow bolt, a fire wall, or a meteor shower. Meteor shower sounds the coolest. Oh, replace the skill. Well, sure, I will replace the chaos bomb. Increase our chain lightning even more, please. All right, we're getting body blocked a bit again. We shouldn't forget we have a dash. And I can't help but notice that we killed the elite. Or we killed the Lord, to say it in the game's terminology. Let's go for Behemoth. I was talking about going defensive options, so I should stick to my word. Practice what I preach. Something very important for me. 
Lightning Bolt. Yeah, 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 let's go, let's go. We want to get rid of all our non-lightning abilities. Does this sword also have some lightning? No, it's holy. It's not combined with lightning. Let's stay moving around and try to collect as much of these rune stones with a different color as possible. Because I presume that they are going to be used for upgrades later on. One thing I have noticed already is that I look at my experience points a lot less often than in the other games. Vampire Survivors and Biters and Bullets. Because there's this giant gem over here. Because it's on the bottom of the screen. That giant gem is probably... Well, it could be two things. It could either be like the agglomeration, the conglomeration of all the experience orbs that are off screen. But because this is such a small map, I believe they will probably not have done that. So my other hypothesis, which is more probably, which is more probable according to me, is this is what the Ice Lord dropped. We can replace the skills over here, the choices with passive power-ups. That's something we want to do because there are no electric skills here. Cast frequency. Let's go. Let's go for Chain Lightning again. We're always looking for Chain Lightning. Chain Lightning and Meteor Shower hit me up because it was an active skill, uh, an epic upgrade. Man, we're getting a whole lot of upgrades here. Switch to passive. Give me a rare one. So far, man, I gotta say, it's really, really quite the enjoyable experience. We're almost spawning our next Lord and we need to defeat five Lords to, I guess, complete the map. To win the game, to win our run. It's of course a roguelike slash roguelite, so it's not about just winning once. No, it's about winning, buying upgrades and going back to the battlefield. Continuing the fight. Lovely display of the effects that are on the enemies as well. Very clear. The UI in this game is very clean and everything is very clearly explained. Look at the area of effect we are putting out right here. Our whirlwind is almost encapsulating the entire screen by now. There he is. The Plague Bearer. Oh man, he looks cool art style is beautiful a bit cartoony a bit less realistic i guess than biters and bullets but it still definitely has some similarities right or am i going crazy you know, we don't want to be in there there's a lot happening right now i can feel my frames per second also tanking down to below the 60 frames per second mark but the pc upgrade is imminent you know if you guys would all like to donate to my patreon to make it come quicker that would be very greatly appreciated but for now this is what we're gonna have to do with this is what we're gonna have to roll with He's at half health. We're doing great. Using our dash at its max proficiency. And I can't help but notice that our chain lightning is just going through the roof. Level 8 already disability. The basic enemies have changed again. I see a lot of new cobra looking guys around there. And because it is a plague bearer we are up against this lord. He is of course going to create some toxic clouds on the ground. Something to look out for. We are definitely still naviga navigating through the enemies perfectly though. You know our Templar's verdict is also nothing to sneeze at. And we did take down the lord. Let's get his ability. This time we're going to do it immediately. I don't see any lightning ability so I'm going passive. Chain lightning. Chain lightning is my bay. Right, I can't help but feel like we're just doing A-OK, -okay, you know? We haven't been hit in a long time. And because of the clear markings on the ground of where not to be, it's actually very much achievable to dodge. A lightning skill, huh? Let's replace Meteor Shower. Even though we have already leveled it to level 3, I would rather replace this than replace Templar's Verdict. Because I feel like Templar's Verdict is also a fine source of damage output for us now. What are you guys as opinions on the game so far does it provide healing yes it does the green crystals provide healing i don't know why it decided to spawn again now but i'm not complaining what are you guys' opinions so far on the game does it look enjoyable does it look more enjoyable than biters and bullets i feel like it looks more enjoyable than vampire survivors and almost all of the new games in the genre will probably do that because i mean that clearly had the nostalgic approach they didn't aim to look perfect or to look very, very appealing. This game definitely does. They have invested a lot in creating the right aesthetic, I believe. And they succeeded. For me, at least, for my personal opinion, it's a really enjoyable look. Gameplay-wise, it feels smooth. It feels smooth, but it also feels impactful. Even from level 1, when they give you this enormous AoE attack already, it feels great. It's way better than in Vampire Survivors when you start with just like one small itty bitty little bullet. The Avatar of Ice again. I was worried for a second because of the introduction of all the elemental abilities that the upgrade screens would be a bit clogged and there would be a bit too many options. But for now it seems to be A-OK. -okay. It's not that cluttered at all. I can still make sense of everything. And I still have the idea that you definitely have the option to go different builds, but it's not like there's too many options to complete one build perfectly, you know what I'm saying? You probably don't, because that was very confusing. What I mean to say is the upgrade system also looks pretty nice. Can't help but notice that this is a, a bit of a step up in difficulty from our previous lords. 
There's a whole lot of shit to dodge. <laughs> oh, that's this is definitely where we need to where we need movement speed or like a shorter dash reduction that hasn't appeared yet. Maybe that's one of the agile upgrades as well. But for now, it's harder and harder to dodge all the red areas on the ground. There's hounds countering us as well as our adversaries. We want to get out of here. Oh, we got hit. We're getting ourselves stuck a bit as well. We don't have that much health points left. It would already be, I think, a valiant effort that we put in in our first run over here. I wouldn't mind dying right now, but getting a bit further would also not be too bad. The game kind of throws you out when you're stuck. So they have empathy at least, sympathy. Yeah, we're struggling. It's not great. I'm looking for a healing crystal, but I can't seem to find one yet. It is, of course, expected for these lords to be harder for us to complete because, well, our build is very much focused on AoE damage. So we are focused more on killing trash. Ay ay ay. One HP. That's all we need though. We don't need more. One HP experience. Ah, damn. Oh. Whew. Our first try for the Scorching Valley. A survival time of 11 minutes and 46 seconds. Not too bad. Not too bad at all. We were still figuring everything out, of course. We were still looking at all the possible upgrades. Figuring out how the map looked and stuff. It was cool. Well, we already have enough to unlock some new characters. For these other characters, you need actual large gems, which you get from defeating the lords. As you can see, we got one corrupted soul stone and one vile soul stone already. For the blacksmith to upgrade our weapon, we need emeralds and rubies and iron. Things we have not found anywhere because they can be found in the first map. All right, interesting. We have a ruby though. Runes are not available in the demo version, but the skill tree might be. Oh, and the skill tree also just costs our general resource. So do we want to unlock a character or already get into the skill tree a bit? Hear me out. We almost never take agile upgrades because of course, when you're playing the game and you're in the middle of battle, you feel like, oh, I need this damage. I need this new ability. I need the attack speed upgrade. I need to attack 0.1% faster. I need to have a bigger area of effect. It's way harder to convince your brain that getting an agile upgrade will also increase increase the dopamine output up there in the cortex so i think for the skill tree we might focus on the skills that focus on agility so that we don't have to pick them in game and as you all know i'm a sucker for passive upgrades and getting this passive upgrade already up to level 2 is great because it means that we will be able to buy more upgrades quickly in the future let's also go for a damage modifier it seems like in the certain sections of the tree when you buy an upgrade in that section, all upgrades in that section get more expensive. For example, this costs 4,000 now, and that is because I have invested so many minor soul stones into this branch of the passive tree already. This one still costs 500 because I have invested no skill points into this branch of the tree at all. And then here we also have 1,000, 1,500, so that seems to be the system. It's the same system as Vampire Survivors, but they did it for the entirety of the available upgrades. This is more focused into specific builds, I think, and I love it. I absolutely love it enjoyable first look at the game great first first impressions the soundtrack and sound design is nice the art is very pleasing to the eye it runs smoothly of course there's some fps lags but that's to be expected from such a <coughs> pardon me from a game like this it almost always happens the attacks feel impactful there seems to be a lot of diversity in the possibilities for different builds it's nice to introduce a whole bunch of different currencies that's something new that's not something vampire survivors or biters and bullets did that gives you like a more diverse dopamine serotonin release in biters and bullets i loved the map design the fact that they actually designed it and put effort into it and made it walled off but still quite a large area and here i like that it's the other way around that it's clearly a very small area where the combat is going to be focused on one space the early game in this game is also a lot less slow than something like vampire survivors or biters and bullets you immediately get jumped into the action and the difficulty ramps up quicker and quicker so at 11 minutes and 30 seconds i already felt at like a level that i would normally feel like in vampire survivors at like the 20 minute mark all in all enjoyable definitely watch out for a video or two more in this game because i really really enjoyed my time so far thanks a lot for watching bye bye oh and check it out for yourself it's free